Hey everyone, in the previous video I showed how to use the Custom Vision Prediction SDK in c -sharp to get predictions from your Custom Vision model. In this video, we're going to look at the Training SDK to show how you can retrain your model once you have more image data. So let's get started. In a .NET Core 2 console project in Visual Studio, and like before, we have our Training and Prediction SDKs installed from NuGet, as well as the Client Runtime Package. In the code, I also have where I get my training and prediction keys. And again, similar to when we want to make a prediction, we need to instantiate an instance of the training API and pass in the API key, as well as to get a reference to the ERB project to send the images to. And now that we have all that set up, we need an image to send for training. We'll utilize Google Images once again and pick out a Rema image for Cilantro. Let's go back to the code. We'll ask the user to input the location of the image on the file system. Then we need to pass in a tag to tell the custom vision service how to classify the image for training. We'll ask the user to pass this in as well. However, since our tags in the custom vision service is capitalized, we should send it that way too. We'll do a care dot two upper on the first letter, then do a two lower on the rest of the tag stream. With our capitalized tag, let's now use the training API to get a list of all the tags and make sure the one entered by the user matches one of those. With our tag being matched, let's now take the image path that we got from the user earlier to do a file.openread on it to get a file stream object on the image. We were able to use this file stream object directly when predicting on our images, but with training we need to copy this to a memory stream object. To do that, we create a new instance of memory stream and with the file stream object, copy that to the memory stream object. And to send the images to the custom vision service, we need two classes from the training SDK. Image file create entry that we need to create for each image we send to the service and image file create batch to batch up each instance of the image file create entry that we would create. This is also where we assign the tags to the images. For the image file create entry, since we only have one image for each run, in the constructor we will just pass in the image name, and we can do this from the file stream object. Then we pass in as a second parameter the image data. This parameter needs the image data as a byte array. And this is where the memory stream comes in because we can just call to array on it. We aren't able to do that with the file stream object. With the entry object created, we can now use it to fill in the image file create batch object. And instead of passing in parameters through a constructor, we pass the data in through properties. The images property needs to be of iList, so we can create a new list of image file create entry and just use the object of that that we just created. Then we need to fill in the tag IDs property, which is also of iList. So we just create a new list of GUIDs and use that match tag that we got earlier and use its ID property. So with our image data and tags now filled out the way the training SDK wants, we can now use it to send the files to the custom vision service. On a training API object called the create images from files method, Pass in the project ID so the SDK knows what project to send the images to, and the image file create batch object that we just created. Created. From the result of that call, it returns a list of images that were sent to the service. For each of those images, we can check its status. And this is useful if we have to send a lot of images and want to make sure they are all uploaded to the service before we continue to train on them. Another cool thing is that the custom vision service knows if we send duplicate images so it won't train on the same image twice. After we have the new images in the custom vision service, we can now train on it. On a training API, just call the train project method and pass in the project ID. Similar to the images, we need to give it some time to complete the training. After the initial call to train project, you get an iteration object back and on that object is a status property. We need to wait until the status is completed. To do that, we'll do a while loop and tell it to keep looping until the iteration status isn't completed. 
Within the loop, we'll wait one second before calling the getIteration method on the training API. We pass in the project ID and also the iteration ID that we got when we initially called the train project method. When the training is complete, that will update the status and break out of the loop. The last step is to set the new iteration of our model to the default. Since we have the latest iteration as a reference, as a reference we can just set the is default property to true and then call the update iteration method to send that to the custom vision service. And this takes in the project ID, the iteration ID, and the entire iteration object. And now we're done training. We can go to the custom vision portal and see that we have a new iteration. So that's how you can use the c -sharp SDK to programmatically train on new image data to get a new version of your model. Hope this has showed just some of the cool things you can do in the c -sharp version of the custom vision SDK.